Now in today's SUV market, there is so much to choose from. Many SUVs though, don't have true off-road capability. In its origin of what an SUV actually is, the Land Rover Defender has solidified themselves in SUV history. So when we're talking about an actual off-road capable, rugged terrain, sport utility vehicle and not just soccer mom driving kids back and forth to school and, and go to the grocery store type of SUV. The Land Rover Defender, like we said, has solidified themselves in history. They've been around for over 30 years now. It is an icon for off-roading. And in today's video, I'm happy to give you guys a review of the all new 2020 Land Rover Defender. So in today's video, we will, as always, of course, do an exterior walk around. We're gonna talk about the interior, talk about the power plant, what's it like to drive and so on. But before we continue on with the video, I wanna give a special thanks to Jaguar Land Rover of South Hills. They are the ones who are providing the vehicle in today's review. You can find their contact information along with their inventory in the description below. So let's start with the front of the Defender here. And we got a big, nice, beefy grill area with air intakes in three different sections. Now for the headlights, we have a square housing, if you will, but the LED daytime running lights are rounded along with the headlights, of course, and then the turn signals are in a uh, square shape. Just very, very good looking. And then a little further down here, we have what I guess you still call fog lights. Nowadays, it almost seems like it's mandatory for every manufacturer when they're coming out with a new model in their lineup to have rounded lines, at least somewhere on the vehicle. Some designs are completely rounded. The boxiness of especially SUVs have gone away. Now, while the new Defender has some rounded spots there, especially around the front, if you look at it from the side, it still has that amazing boxy look. It's tall. We have an optional roof rack that gives it even a more beefy look from the side. And then we also have this optional storage compartment right here, which is just a very Defender-esque. Now wheel options, they vary from 18 to 22 inch. What we have on our tester here today are 20 inch with optional off-road tires. But one thing, I think that the purest will pick, and I think this is very cool by Land Rover to have this as an option, are 18 inch white steel wheels. That just brings it back to the original look of the Defender. And I just, I think it's so cool. Now there's two versions to pick from when uh, you're buying a Defender. You can get either the Defender 90, which is a two door. However, what we have here today, planes, is the Defender 110, which is the four door. And just take a look at the uh, Defender from the rear. It looks pretty beefy, I gotta say. We got a fender line that sticks out right there, just giving it a wider look. And then we got two tail lights right here. They are LED, of course. And then we have two extra ones right here. And initially, I thought this was some kind of uh, parking light or something. But when you turn the turn signal on, you have four lights blinking on each side, which is just very different. I don't really know why they did that, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. We have a tow hitch right here as well, and good to know with the Defender, it can tow up to 8,200 pounds. And thank God, unlike typical SUVs, you don't have a traditional lift gate, you have a side opening tailgate. And when we open up here, we got a storage compartment right here in the actual tailgate. Now we're gonna talk about this shortly here when we get to the interior part of the vehicle, but uh, the Defender 110 comes with a third row to seven seater. With the third row down, you have 38 cubic feet of cargo space. And check this out, this is really cool. So you can actually lower the vehicle. We haven't talked about that yet, but it has, look at that. It has air ride suspension or air suspension. I'm assuming you can do that from the back. Oh, look at that, man. It moves up so fast. And it just lifts the rear. So I'm assuming that uh, it lets you do that because it's easier to load stuff into the uh, back of the Defender. That is an extremely cool option. And back here, we also have a 12 volt. And I'll show you later on. This vehicle has millions of charging ports. Never seen an SUV or any kind of car, for that matter, that has as many charging ports as the Defender. The climate control buttons back here. 
we have cup holders on each side. It's probably easier if I just remove all this stuff. There we go. And uh, now that we can see better, look at that. We got a full power plug back here as well. And you can just pull the seat up like that. So more seating available, a lot less cargo space. Now you can pull these big old headrests down just by pulling that little strap. And look at that, another 12 volt right there. <laughs> very, very impressive. So before we jump inside, we'll talk about the different trim levels that you can get of the Defender. So we have the base model just called the Defender. Then you have the S, the SE, the HSE, and then also the X that's coming out later this year. However, ours is a first edition. And basically what that means is that it's pretty much based off of an HSE. So one of the higher trim levels. And then of course you get some uh, cool badging here and there. So we have one on the uh, tailgate there. And when we open up the car, we have one on the door sill as well. Now there's two engine alternatives for the new Defender. We have a two liter four cylinder with 300 horsepower. And then we have this three liter six cylinder with 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. And we'll talk more about that once we're out on the road. So we're gonna start in the second row here. I'm sitting behind my driver's position and I'm six foot one and a half. So it's good to know that a uh, fully grown adult has plenty of room back here. Headroom as well is, I mean, it's really, really good. Now, while we're sitting back here, look at this. So we got a little five volt charger there, like a USB port. And then they have a little opening cubby here. I honestly don't really know what that is for. It's uh, different, that's for sure. And then down here, we have climate controls, of course. You got 12 volt right there. You got USB port right there, USB port right there, and another 12 volt right there. Nice leather and cloth. We got the optional panoramic sunroof that uh, obviously brings in a lot more light into the cabin. And then in the ceiling, we got the uh, classic Defender windows, which brings in a lot more light for the third row if anyone's ever sitting back there. We're gonna try it, but it's gonna be pretty tight. And before we jump back there, we'll talk about this uh, second row passenger door. Two things, I love the design language with the bolts. It gives it that typical rugged off-road look, I guess. And uh, for the first time ever, I mean, I've never seen this on any vehicle, the passenger door has a blind spot monitor. And that's for if you're opening your door, the system will sense if maybe a uh, snobby Ford Explorer owner comes driving right here, it'll let you know, don't open the door. Maybe a bicyclist or a skateboarder or something like that. But I have never seen that before in passenger doors, whether they're up front or in the second row. That is a pretty cool feature. So we have a lever for the second row right under here. So you can move the seat front and back, and then you pull this lever here, and the seat falls forward. So we're gonna jump into the third row, and yeah, unless the second row is pushed forward, you don't have a lot of room back here. But like we said, we got a cup holder there, we got climate control for the third row, and it's actually pretty cool sitting back here with these safari lights, but not for a long period of time. All right, well, we're gonna jump in the driver's seat here, take a look at some of the interior and the tech as well, which is absolutely amazing, and then we'll get it out on the road. But before we do that, just take a quick look at the key fob here. Uh, it's sort of big, I guess, it's black, nothing special. Uh, lock, unlock, tailgate, light switch, and then a panic button. And of course, like most modern cars nowadays, it has easy access, so you just put your hand on the door handle if this is in your key or purse or wherever you have it and open the door and then we'll take a look at the interior like we mentioned in the second row here love these bolts and uh, even the drivers and the passenger side has this blind spot monitoring system for when you're opening the door but other than that we just have window controls mirror controls lock unlock and then we have a Meriden sound system and in this trim the uh, first edition, which is based off the HSE, we get 400 watts of power. If you jump up to the X, it's 700 watts and a few more speakers. 
big cubby of course in the door as well I like this little design here where it's kind of like a hole so you can really grab onto the door it's not really that heavy but yeah good to have i guess now the seat we talked about that already but we've got ebony interior it's half leather half uh, i mean i'm assuming it's cloth that's what it feels like at least they're comfortable seats seat control buttons are all on the side right here and right here we got handlebars as well very cool i like that and we got a cubby this is one cubby of uh, a million cubbies <laughs> in this vehicle pretty hot today so we'll uh, go ahead and start the vehicle up get some air conditioning running start button right there So the interior of the Defender is actually very nice. It's not too busy, but it's also not too minimalistic. Not too many buttons, but it doesn't look plain either. And we'll start here on the steering wheel. Like I said, the busyness is not really there. We do have buttons, but it, it's not crazy amounts. And one thing that I actually like that's not a technical feature is how it's designed here. Guess who was driving all the way here in this position? Yeah. You guessed it. Now we have buttons on the left side here. And the one thing I don't like, I mean, 99% of this vehicle I, I love. Defender is amazing. This is one thing I don't like. This looks, first of all, very plasticky. It also feels plasticky. And it sounds plasticky when, when you touch it. That's obviously because it is plastic. <laughs> but it's just got, it's got a, a cheap feel to it. I don't know, maybe if they could have just used slightly different material for this black part here on each side um, other than that I mean the the functions and the features work great we got a LED instrument cluster here we got the speedometer right there and then the tachometer on the right so when you're flipping through the different options here two dial one dial full map see what that does yeah see look at that that's amazing I like that and then we can make the whole screen a navigation screen so let's see yeah, and then we got a digital speedometer right up there. It tells you that it's in drive and so on. Very, very nice. Now, our tester here has a uh, mid console. You can get like a third seat here, like a jump seat. But our tester has the console, which is what I would prefer, of course. We got a big cubby here, and it also has the optional refrigerator, which is, of course, very, very cool. So you can keep your favorite beverage down here, and it'll stay cool. And then of course right here we got two cup holders down here we got a, a big cubby space right here more chargers so we got two charging ports right here a 12 volt right there and then we get up to this mid section here again not too busy yeah we have some buttons and so on but i i, I just like the layout now the first button we're going to press here is of course the air suspension and it just races so quick go back down and then we got hill descent, we got auto start stop, we got climate control buttons here. So we got dual climate control, of course, and it's digitalized. And then for the fan speed, you just push this button right here, and then on the right dial, you go up and down for the fan speed that you want. Now the gear selector, just a big handle here, you got a button behind, and then to put it in reverse, we'll talk about that right away here, it's got a phenomenal 360 camera with very very good resolution and you can choose different options here for on road and then if you click off road it'll show you your four wheel drive system here and then towing now if we're turning the wheel you can see the yellow arrow or indicator there turning very very nice and then our park button is just a push talk more about the tech here shortly we got another charger right there of course USB port and then we got handles three handles <laughs> for the passenger if you're doing very very bumpy off-road driving I'm assuming nice materials up here as well up here we have just buttons for the sunroof and the shade we got sunglass holder right there extremely good headroom as it should be in a defender but let's quickly talk about the uh, technical features here because it is pretty impressive. You got a lot to choose from and the screen itself is not too big. One thing that we're gonna look at here is wade sensing. So this is an amazing feature for if you're, again, yes, we understand, if you're doing off-roading in water and you can choose here between feet and meters, 
Now, since we're in the United States, we're of course gonna do feet so everyone understands. So what it's showing us here is that we have a maximum of 2.5 feet of depth if you're going through water. Now, if I push this button here and raise the vehicle up, you can see this indicator here. This is how fast it's racing. And then it went up to 2.7 feet. I just, I think that is so cool. And then you have four by four info right here, showing you everything about the four wheel drive system. Then you have different drive modes as well. Grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, sand, rock crawl mode, eco mode, comfort mode, and so on. And then you can configure your Defender in any way that you want. But this weight sensing is, yeah, I'm impressed. And then we're gonna lower it back down again. Another feature that's kind of cool and also kind of funny, I don't know exactly why they have this, but you can look at your vehicle dimensions. So uh, a 110 is 16.5 feet long and 6.1 feet wide and 6.3 feet tall. And then if we go to off-road, it'll show you the wheelbase length as well. And then the width right there. And then from side mirror to side mirror, I mean, I just, I think it's so cool. And then we'll go back to the main screen. It's got heated seats. You have to click here, you click on, and then you go up and down. You got three different settings. I obviously don't want that on now. And then the last thing we're gonna look at here is the camera. And then you can click all these little spots right here, and it shows you on the camera, you got so many different angles. Look at that. This is amazing for parking. Wow. I mean, I've had vehicles with 360 cameras and I'm sure other brands of course have this type of feature, but I've never seen it as in depth as in this Land Rover here. Very impressed. And if we look behind the screen, we got storage space right here. I love how they just maximize all the little cubby spaces so you can just store stuff <laughs> all over the place. But what we wanna know, of course, is how it drives. And what we're gonna do in today's video, we're not going off-roading like you should be doing in the new Defender, but to be honest, most of the people who buy an SUV nowadays, whether it's a Defender or a little Chevy Equinox or something like that, they're driving on regular roads, doing regular stuff that people do. So for everyday driving, what is the Defender like? It actually has a very, very smooth ride. I like the way that it handles being a big, big SUV like this that weighs over two tons. We got some curvy roads here like it is all over the place in PA. I'm taking this turn here 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's not you know, made to be doing that, but let's stomp on it here. You know, 400 horsepower in the Defender actually makes it pretty quick. It does zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds. But what I've noticed though, is uh, you should be having it in sport mode. And what you do is you just pull the gear selector to the left and it, increases the throttle response by miles. And it's not that it's too sensitive either, but yeah, you have the torque and the power instantly. When it's in comfort mode, you kind of have to, you know, really stomp on the gas pedal for it to start going. And that's just my personal preference. Now, one of my favorite tech features of this SUV is the rear view mirror. Now let's say you have people in the third row or you pack the Defender full of luggage or equipment or whatever and you can't see out the rear window. There's a switch right here. You pull it and then you have a high definition camera of everything that's going on behind you. That I know a lot of vehicles have this feature but I've never seen it in person and I think it's just absolutely amazing. That is such a smart thing to think about when you have limited visibility out of the rear window. Now one thing that I've noticed while driving the Defender, and I don't really know if this comes out on audio from the video, is that you hear wind noise. You hear a lot of whooshing noise 
while driving the vehicle. One reason might be because of the optional equipment uh, box on the side of it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there, there's a lot, not road noise from the tires or anything like that, but there's wind noise. I'm sure I would get used to it, but for some people that might be a, a little annoying. Now, if we talk about the value of the Defender, um, it starts at right under $50,000 for the base model. This one that we're driving today is at around $75,000, and they will go up to over $85,000, which in today's market for SUVs is pretty competitive. Now, when the bigger version of the Ford Bronco comes out, that's gonna be a competitor to this vehicle right here, but it's most likely gonna be a lot cheaper. So when you're buying a Land Rover, you're always buying into that little higher price bracket of brands. But if you're doing long distance driving in the Defender, two nice features that it does have is blind spot monitoring and also adaptive cruise control. If you don't know what adaptive cruise control is, it's uh, advanced cruise control where you can actually set the distance to the vehicle ahead of you. And if the vehicle ahead of you slows down, your vehicle will automatically slow down as well to keep that distance that you initially set. So the Land Rover has an eight speed automatic transmission. And like with most automatic transmissions, they give you the option to shift manually. And what impressed me is that when you do choose to shift manually, it actually does it really quickly. That's impressive. And it's not a dual clutch. Not that I would really sit and shift manually if this was my Defender, but uh, yeah, it's good to know. I think that Land Rover has done something really, really good and made the Defender modern, but also stay true to its roots. Yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already, and you want to, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.